بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم این اے ویری گڈ ڈے ٹو آل آف یو مائی دیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ہاؤ آر وی ڈوئنگ ٹو ڈے گڈ دیٹس نائس آئی ایم شیور ناؤ یو نو وٹ وی ہیو کوڈ ان دا پریویس لیکچر اسپیشلی ود ریفرنس ٹو دا اسٹرکچر آف اے رپورٹ دا وے وی ہیو کوڈ اٹ اینڈ لکڈ ان ٹو اٹ اینڈ ناؤ یو نو وٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو کور اسپیشلی ود ان آر ڈیز لیکچر وی ہیو ٹو کمپلیٹ دا اسٹرکچر الانگ سائڈ some of the example, the exemplary samples that we look into, that we analyze in detail, they are the minor things, the sections, their division, we look into each and every section so that you may not have any trouble at all when the time comes when you'll be writing your own report. But alongside all that discussion, let's just take a start starting from what we have covered in the previous lecture. So this was basically the focus. If you remember now, we looked into the way we organized that title page and we had a good talk you know it that there are four components which should be there talking about uh, the title itself then written by whom and, and like who's the person who's going to receive it the date and then alongside some instruction with reference to that formatting style that you have to follow specially uh while preparing that document and of course at the top left there should be something what was the name yes you are getting it quite right you write the title itself alongside the word running head then afterwards on the right on the top right you have the page number and it continues and for the rest of the page what was the instruction that i told you with reference to running head yes there is something which has to be omitted and uh, within the header section and now you know what has to be there and what should be omitted so you're well aware of it with reference to the executive summary you know all the details you know how it simply reflects the gist of the whole report so everything has to be there in that logical sequence the way it's coming ahead as well not that much of quantification not that much of the use of the abbreviation because that can cause a little bit of confusion especially for the people who will be uh reading that report and not that report only the executive summary of that report so managerial readers let's say so they can have a little bit of confusion and in order to avoid it better to avoid and come up with the, the exact wording then talking about the table of content what it is you follow the basic decimal system that is expected from you and it simply gives the organizational structure of the report talking about its scope and that's the way you organize things the manner in which all the chapters are basically coming chapter 1 what's there chapter 2 what is included within it chapter 3 of course the methodology then 4 your results you conclude then you come to the end so it's all there within single page table of contents can be even more than one so it depends basically but the point here is that's how you organize it and then we uh, came to the end of our talk by looking at some samples as well of how you basically write the introduction the bigger picture the context and what it covers background description of the problem your aims and your objectives a light overview of the methodology and the anticipated results then talking about the boundary we have a name for it what it is yes scope so you define the scope on the basis of which you talk about the limitation and there was a little bit more talk with reference to significance do you remember it significance is directly related with being aware of your target audience and problem description uh, goes directly in line with your purpose so if you know uh, what's the basic problem you'd be able to write the purpose so everything is like connected and you have to follow it accordingly if you know one thing you'd be able to write it simply in the form of a report as well so that's how we looked into multiple things like that so we can revise things as well just the way like a quick overview of what we had uh, covered in the previous lecture the flashback but now let's move ahead and talk about what we're going to study and cover within our today's section so if we just take a start let me just uh, encircle it for you our today's focus would be on the discussion section alongside some of the points which are of course there within these slides 
I want you to jot down some minor things that I'll be telling you which are going to make a lot of difference especially to make you a professional writer. That's why I took a pause as well that what's coming at uh, like you may also get into it that what the sir is about to say. So what's that thing that sir is about to say? So you got it. To make you a professional writer you need to learn the etiquettes of professional writing as well. And what I refer to is avoiding plagiarism, coming up with your own writing and writing it professionally uh, with reference to all the sources that you have read, you acknowledge them, you document those sources, you cite those sources. So we'll be discussing these points as well gradually and steadily when the time comes. But right now you already have seen what we have to cover so let's just take a start with our very first slide of the discussion section. So what do we mean by discussion? Do you remember the points that I told you at the very beginning or the initial slides of the previous lecture? It's more or less the same concept that you have to keep in mind that this discussion section basically explains what uh, you have to like accomplished, what problems you encountered. So what have you accomplished? That's how you can structure it as well to understand the basic idea. So what exactly you accomplished, what problems you encountered, what you saw and did, what procedure you followed, what you learned from the task, what options exist as feasible solution to a problem. So not everything is supposed to be there uh, like all together to define what basically the discussion section is all about. The point can be clarified with these things which are written within parentheses. The point is, my dear students, that, for example, if you talk about uh, a kind of report in which you have to report on the status of some ongoing event, so what problems have you encountered? That's why if you look at the bullet number two, it clearly states that within a status report, you have to talk about the status of an ongoing event. And with reference to that problem which is being studied, which is being identified, over here within this category of a report that you will be studying in the upcoming lectures as well, when we'll be talking about one or another uh, regarding the types of report, the point is that although the overall process of writing a report remains the same, but still you have to remember the focus of your report. It will directly go with the kind of task which has been assigned to you. And accordingly, the, that kind of report is given that specific category that you're going to see as well. Like one category as written over here is uh, the status report where you basically have to talk about the status of or the status of an ongoing event. So you have to report over it. You talk about if you have been sent on a visit and you have to basically report on that survey which you have carried out or you went for a visit and you have to report that what is happening within that area where you were uh, simply sent for a survey. So in that case you have to write a trip report. The name is also telling you that over here you have to report on what you saw and what you did as written over here. So the previous was regarding what problems you encountered meaning what's the actual status. The second one already explained to you, if we just move ahead, what procedure you followed. Over here, you have to focus more on uh, the kind of methodology that has been chosen for uh, carrying out or for the collection of the data. If we talk about the one, two, three, four, five, we talk about bullet number five, what you learn from the task. So that means this is like the kind of situation in which you have to basically experiment on something. You have to carry out an experimental process and you have to basically provide a report over it. Like it could be some sort of experimentation regarding the electrical circuits. It could be with respect to the chemical reaction. You know, just the way we used to do all these reactions, acid and base, then making salts and what were the products so you have and we used to do all the testings as well 
I am giving reference of chemistry right now, but it could be the case of even dissection that we do in case of biology. So you report on what were your findings, the way the organs are there, and you know if you are looking for the circulatory system, so you report over it, whether you were able to do it or not, what are the placement of the different organs. This is one example of biology, one example of chemistry, and regarding the circuits, if you are have to mire, you know, I can think of the vernier calipers when you had to, you know, take out uh, the exact length, diameter using vernier caliper and there was I guess a screw gauge as well. So then you report over it, you take out using that specific formula and then you provide your reports that what were your findings of all those things that you have basically measured. So there are different things that you do within the lab and you basically provide it especially within a professional environment writing a lab report or a laboratory report. So this is basically the point which you have to understand here with reference to the way you basically provide all the discussion. Then there could be another objective as well or you can call it as a purpose as well of why you are writing a report in case of the last bullet what options exist as feasible solutions to a problem. So now the problem is there and after studying that problem in detail now you have been asked to provide a set of proposals some alternate solution meaning that you are being given the space of uh, giving your opinion, giving your argument and that argumentation should be based on the fact that it should provide some set of solutions and recommendations. So that will basically have the structure of a proposal which is why I just uh, simply drew a spiral line to focus on the fact that when you have to basically propose something so that proposal is basically meant to make uh, something better by resolving the problem by coming up with some alternative solutions which if applied can solve the problem so if that is the objective if that is the purpose so for that you also focus within your discussion section in detail and your discussion is basically based on this fact that you pinpoint that you focus uh, if that structure of the report is basically based on the proposal then your all alternate solution are going to indicate them within the discussion section of course you can if we talk about the discussion section if it's coming earlier at, which is after all the case that if you are introducing thing if you are if you have identified the problem in the introduction section you have highlighted what will be the focus of the study then the way you're going to move ahead with it and then comes the discussion section even if we say that you have to talk about methodology afterwards but within that discussion section if we say that if it's a proposal that you are writing then this is the space the discussion section where you're going to document other sources meaning you have to expand your study give reference to other multiple credible authors and the authors whose works are acknowledged they are documented they are cited the point here is you give reference of those people who have worked in a field similar to it and their findings become quite relevant to what you are working on and as an indication of the kind of solutions that you will be proposing or recommending first you give a reference or give a reflection of what they proposed from the findings of their study so this is the space this is the section where you can do all this and that's why I have been talking about it and reflecting all the, the different categories, the way you can like focus uh, on this particular section, how to write it, how to compose it. Now you know with reference to or keeping in view the kind of type of report on which you are working, you can structure it. And now you know how it can be done. So with that done, I'm about to move to the next slide. So you know time is there for the queue and I'm moving ahead some other points with reference to this discussion section that you should know are that this discussion section can basically be considered as the author's reflection on the subject matter 
So the same point that I just discussed within the previous slide, just keep that in mind and you'd be able to understand this idea as well. That you basically have highlighted or you have basically introduced or pinpointed the, the subject matter or the basic problem which has been studied and now which is being reported in the form of a report. The point here is that now this discussion section is the space where you can talk about it in detail, you can discuss it in detail, like talking about description was one thing where you stated it directly. And then you move to the next stage where the word explanation was there within the previous slide as well. Just look into it to uh, just verify that what I was meaning by the difference between uh, description and explanation. So in case of explanation, this is the space where you have to provide the argument to highlight the significance of the problem that you're dealing with and that's how it becomes so important to resolve the issue as well. So that's how this point becomes important that you reflect on the subject matter and how serious it is and then how significant it is to resolve it on an immediate basis. This is the place. Author's expression of his or her opinion and views. So how can this be done basically? If you really want to give your view, it has to be done in a way. You can talk about it directly, of course, in your own words. Another way of doing the same thing is that aligning your view with a kind of view which is relevant and has been set by another credible author which can be or whose work can be documented here within your report. Even if we talk about all the examples that we have been uh, sharing with respect to a kind of report that you are dealing with and that is all about the effects of stress, the way it affects the overall performance. So who else has worked on that same domain? Maybe they have worked on people who uh, are working part time and they have uh, simply studied the effect of stress on some other area, maybe some other country, uh, that country might be Australia or could be America or could be any other European country. But the point here is that you give their reference and reflect your view alongside documenting the view and the findings of all the sources that you are using to strengthen your argument. That's how you strengthen your argument by giving reference to multiple sources, by acknowledging their work, by giving their reference and it's called basically documenting those sources. And once you're documenting it automatically, you are avoiding plagiarism. Because you're not saying that it's my view, it's my opinion, you're basically saying that's the view of those people. And if you have to state it directly, once again the point is quotation marks within which the statement comes, then you within parentheses write the author's name, then the basic year in which it's done and you place it and then full stop. That's how you do it. Within this area, their exact statement, the way they have stated it or their view, that's how it all is written. If you read any book, you're going to realize that, oh yes, sir is right. The author's name is written there and that's uh, their surname. By surname, I mean their last name. If I say, if you have to cite any of my view, the way not view is basically in written, if you have to quote it somewhere. So my name, if my name is Anmol Ahmed, so you'll say, uh, parenthesis open, Ahmed, A-H-M-A-D, comma, then the year, let's say if it's uh, 2010, 2010, bracket close, full stop. That's how you basically cite the author and that's how you basically document all the resources. Then the time and the stage comes of, of course, uh, when it comes of completely preparing a reference page of under the heading of works cited or references or bibliography. So the Microsoft Word is like your assistant and all you have to do is to just give it a command where it will ask you uh, for all the sources like name of the book, uh, then the year of publication, the author, if there is any co-author, it will ask for multiple things. But once you do it, it will 
either you know on one hand it will make such a citation for you and on the other hand it will also do another thing for you and that is that once you click on the works cited page it will automatically prepare a complete reference page for you which is coming at the sample of it is also there for you as the talk uh, just came to the point of documenting the sources especially when you have to give reference to or give expression of views and opinions so it's not just about your views you can strengthen your own argument and your own view by including the views and expressions of other people as well within your writing that's how you basically do it but we'll move into it uh, let's move ahead to look at the other point which is indicates how to I'm over here indicates how to provide solution to the problem so that's also another thing which is clearly comprehensible I mean easy to understand why because the kind of talk that we have been developing the kind of argument that we are developing within the discussion section is all about like you have stated the problem now you're discussing it in detail and within that detailed discussion you're explaining things and within that explanation you're trying to prove that it actually is a problem as it has been worked upon by various other researchers these were their findings as you quote them as you cite them and you also give a reference of the kind of a recommendation and solution which they propose to basically and that proposal that reference of their solution and recommendation is an indication of the kind of solution which is uh, anticipated from your side which is expected from your side as well to come so that's why it's written that you also indicate how to provide solution to the problem so how a solution can come of such a problem that we are facing that's how you can get the idea easily moving onwards it should be a good pro style written by you of course so that will be considered as a good pro, pro style rather than you asking someone or to rely on those spinning machines or softwares to do the thing you know the way when the text is just placed spinned and then you get the mechanical version and then you place it to just fill the task but once it's read by the authorities who have to view it who have to like review over it then the kind of feedback that you get is the one that you already know that those students get were not relying on their own writing abilities they don't know how capable they are so you have to look into yourself I'm not talking generalizing everyone here I'm talking about those who rely on wasting things directly so it's an illegal act it's like not even ethical and you should rely on your own abilities to uh, simply write the report and that's how you'll be able to become a good report writer look into yourself you really are a very good writer and i'll be there to guide you towards each and every step just keep following you'll become a master and keep following and keep practicing okay justified arguments or generalizations so whenever you have to even generalize things or you have to provide arguments it has to be justified and how can you justify once again the point is if you are giving reference to other sources that's how you're making it a justifiable argument because the others have also worked over it so that's how discussion becomes important otherwise it can be questioned if you are not even citing the sources totally making it as your own idea something relevant has already been done like no, you're not the only one who is thinking the same way there are many other people there is so much diversity you just need to look into it internet is like a complete information superhighway that's why we call it it and if you look over it if you search over it you'll be able to find multiple information and multiple sources that you can cite very easily just click on it and you'll see what google and all the other search engines can do for you should we move ahead okay time for the queue and then we are about to move ahead to the next section discussion and it's third part basically so we're going to focus now on these three bullets once again another uh, explanation 
what this discussion section actually does. So the way it covers all the things have already been discussed. What else it does is the thing which is there within the slide. To think critically about an issue, to develop creative solutions to the problem, to formulate a deeper, more profound understanding of the problem which is under investigation. Kind of similar, that, that's why uh, even when I look at all those points, I am satisfied that I have explained things to you, even while referring to the previous components that we have studied. But the point here is, you have to critically analyze things, this is the space. You have the area, you have to talk over it, you have to come up with some justifiable arguments. When you are citing sources, that means that you are paving way for the kind of creative solution that you're going to propose afterwards for the uh, problem under investigation or problem under study. And to formulate a good deeper understanding of the problem which is under investigation. So all these things are basically expected to be there within the discussion section, especially for like, if I consider, if I call myself, I am the journal reader. So I really would be looking to go into the detail and that detail is supposed to be there within the discussion section. That's how this becomes important and should cover all these components within detail. Okay. This table is very much important here for you as I just mentioned that when it comes to explanation, that explanation means now you have the space to critically analyze on an issue and to build an argument, you have to like look into all the things which are in favor of the subject matter or your own argument and all the points which are against the kind of stance that you are basically taking or if you have written any kind of thesis statement. So what is going against it, what is going for it. So if you are for then uh, for, you know, supporting the argument or the stance that you've taken. So then you have to pick all the points that you write over here. This is the area, this is the area, the points. And then you have to focus on these points, especially within your discussion section. And if you want to give a reference of all the points which go against, so, and these can be mentioned as well. Why? If you are like writing these points down as well, then you can think of all these points within your mind too that this can come just the way they have developed within my mind. They can also develop within the mind of the reader who is reading my report. And in order to meet the needs of that disagreement which is about to come from the reader, you provide a set of explanation uh, which comes ahead within the discussion section. One point read, then the dis uh, disagreement is developing within the mind of your reader. So you try to counter argue or you provide or you kind of go for providing a creative solution to the kind of disagreement which is developing within the mind. So if you have thought about against, this is the point, only then you would be able to convince your reader who wants to disagree with you. So think for as well and think against as well. And then provide your own points uh, within this area, but also try to provide arguments or points to counter this area as well and together this will form a bike and it will run your discussion section. Not good at drawing especially with this finger and the kind of uh, slide on which I am using this uh, smart screen for highlighting things but you can see some of the points. The wheels are visible and together they are moving the cycle. Okay. Now we have moved like we have moved to the next section as you can see over here. These are the findings. It's a complete next section which comes once we are done with uh, all the discussion that we have provided. You'll be wondering where did the methodology go? <laughs> well the methodology actually was discussed at the very beginning and that beginning was in the introductory section. Do you remember the kind of method, the way it was written within the examples? If you state your methodology and your method, of course, uh, within the first chapter or the introductory chapter, then there won't be any need of mentioning it once again in the same detail after the discussion. You can move towards the most important findings. However, if that is not the case and if you have just focused on 
stating the problem, aims, scope, limitation, then going to the details, then of course there is a need and the reader would like to know what was your method of data collection, what was your method of analysis and then how did you simply interpret everything. So they would like to know more about it and that's how this becomes important. But with reference to findings, what you need to do and what you need to uh, write within uh, your finding section is that keeping in view these two bullet points you have to state everything even your findings uh, creating the same situation let's say your findings with reference to the kind of uh, problems or the kind of uh, dependent variables which are affected as a result of uh, facing or having stress within a working environment for example if we say the overall working performance gets affected their timings are also affected, their health is uh, affected, their overall communication skills are affected of all the employees as a result of stress. So that means that you are going to mention all these things within the findings. And then overall you have to make a, uh, it in a numerical form. You have to reflect it in a quantifiable form. So you can either make a pie chart, you can make a graph, you can make a histogram, the point here is you try to reflect it in a graphical form as well so that the technical readers, the one who are not that much into the right written thing, they want to just interpret things from the diagrams or able to follow it as well. This is the space where you have to do all those things. Remember lecture number one, last few slides, look into them, just have a look at the sample, the way the graphs, the tables, the charts were provided one after the other alongside the text which was aligned with those diagrams. So nothing goes all alone, things uh, go together and that's how you basically prepare the complete document and with reference to the findings, the way you have to state them. So you need to keep in mind how reliable are these findings and uh, the manner in which you can simply fulfill this category or this bullet point is to run it again, it should not be just based on the single experimentation. You, you either need to relate your study with the previous one, which, ha which simply followed the same kind of method, or you can of course run it again, the whole methodology to collect the result and data and then look into it whether the results are exactly the same or have they changed alarmingly. Because if the results are totally different that means that the methodology seems to be not that much reliable but if they remain the same uh, for your population for your sample for especially the kind of technique you used not that much of difference with reference to time and space and still such a big difference there is something problem and it doesn't seem to be that much reliable but if the overall results th uh, remain the same it overall is reliable you will simply say tick yes it can be mentioned within my finding how significant how can you tell me yes you can simply mention you can clearly explain it to me how you can make it significant and I will listen to you yeah keep talking I am listening and I am following what are all those points that we have been discussing which makes it all significant uh, do you require any kind of hint how about if I just tell you that it's more or less related to the kind of benefit that your study will give and to whom it will give. So you have to imagine about them, who they are, whether they are the working employees, employers, a university students, or society in general. Who are they who are going to get the benefit? So keeping in view them, you have to uh, fulfill this bullet as well. How significant are the findings? Are they really going to make a difference if you share these findings? So you have to state your findings in such a way. Overall, that's why I've written these two bullet points. The way you are going to do it is for, uh, quite comprehensible. You would be able to do it just the way as I told you that in case of such a scenario where the independent variable has affected certain variables, the way I explained it to you just a few minutes ago. So you state them and stating is one thing, mentioning it in numerical form in the form of percentages is another thing, then even making it more uh, specific 
what variable or which variable was the one most affected which was the one least affected then thinking of all the alternative measures taken by an organization of course you will get a data over it as well uh, the employees will give you data of and this is like insurance policy is one thing which gives us a sense of relief because of which we uh, get rid of the stress and we are able to perform better so this comes like a logical solution an indication that it can be applied everywhere as they have pointed out and a majority of those employees have pointed out that it can be a good solution so you pointed out that means it's an indication for the readers as well that this thing can be applied even in our own environment as well but you do not just say it you write it in numerical form as well and that is how it's going to make a difference so now I believe uh, you know how to state one thing and draw the same thing in a graphical form as well because do it together that's so you have to make it in the form of a report now look at the example as well because it's going to help you for understanding things for example you issued questionnaires to 200 working adults 93 adults said they were most unhappy because they did not save as much as they should so 200 working adults and out of those 293 have said and this 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 and such a way the lines have said it all but if you convert it 93 out of 200 makes it this in quantified form and then you write it as 46.5 of the respondents said they were most unhappy because they did not save as much as they don't you think this one is that uh, like more oriented towards the technical side the technical readers who really want statistics who really want percentages who really want those figures to understand and you are also making it part of the general writing as well so that the other kind of readers can also follow it so this is the basic difference hopefully the example was able to clarify your idea that's why it was included as well and I believe that you would be able to apply it even within your report as well will you okay I know you will best of luck for you as well okay now we are moving towards uh, the conclusion section conclusion quite interesting looks a little bit tricky but that's not the case actually because conclusion I will call it as that it can be simple as well I consider it simple especially because now things are already there you just have to sum it up you have to come to the end of that argument or that talk which started uh, at the beginning of the report continued went into the detail you talked about method results everything but now you are summing it up you come to the conclusion uh, if we just point it out logical deductions based on the data and the finding section so you are basically deducing thing you are coming towards the end you are inferring information from what you have collected you are coming towards the end so it's basically a comprehensive summary of the findings on one hand comprehensive which means complete you're not missing out anything but on the other hand it's also a summary of all the findings which means all the key things should be there number two it shouldn't be in that much of detail you have to sum it up you have to take it all over here making it all short this is the kind of detail which was there earlier and now you have made it short you are you know shortening it that's how you come towards the conclusion from all that detail which started so you sum up main points of the report here as well this is bullet number three you highlight the significant elements the key points you relate them to the objectives of the study and you end with a statement which will lead to the recommendation section this is also a very important point that once again to maintain coherence within the whole document you pave the way for the information which is coming right after writing your own statement so this is something which is supposed to be done even here as well while writing your conclusion so you end it with a statement which would indicate that now you are about to come up with some set of recommendation that you will be giving 
in order to resolve the problem on the basis of all the findings, all the key findings that you have stated in your conclusion. So that's how you do it. But in addition to my talk, let's look at uh, the sample which is there for you. Have a look over it. Now I believe that from all that white background, all of a sudden a change. That's why it's here in this form. A separate slide, a slide within a slide, just to make you focus on the kind of example which is there for you. So if you just give it a reading, this report has identified five types of scanners currently available. Some are primarily used for professional purposes such as RAM scanner, others are used more broadly in the workplace and homes such as flatbacks, uh, flatbed scanners and to a lesser extent uh, sheet fed scanners. Scanners for specialized purposes have also been identified such as slide and handle scanners and so on. There are details but I'll keep on reading and reading it will bore you. The point here is that's how you state all the points, you summarize everything, you focus on the key findings as well but that is how you structure your conclusion and should also remember the point that you should pave the way for the information which is coming ahead and what is that information known as yes recommendation so once again you're about to move to the next section as well let's hope there is not any other slide that i always miss i think that i'm about to move to the next section but sometime some information of the previous section is still there that is sometimes missed out but nothing to worry about you know we are together in this journey so let's just move ahead q is there for you if you need it I am about to move ahead to the next section, which is recommendation. Thankfully, a new section there for you. So this section is also very much important. Recommendation can be made concerning the implementation to how much extent uh, it can be implemented. Meaning you, if you look at the second bullet point, which is all about the general applicability, and then looking towards the third point, which is suitability, uh, suitability of the findings and then suggestion of topics for further research. That's how you state your points within the recommendation section. If we talk about um, the same scenario that we have been dealing with for exemplification of uh, analyzing a problem, then collecting all the data, then interpreting all the findings and then concluding and then coming up with some recommendation, same stress, stressful situation that you have been facing for the last few lectures. But the point here is that let's say our conclusion was that insurance policy turned out to be uh, a sign of relief for all the employees who are working in such tough condition. Therefore, it should be introduced by all the working organizations, all the business settings, so that the employees feel more comfortable and feel part of the family of which they have become a part, especially joining them after completing their studies. So if the insurance policy or insurance plan is there as one suitable solution to the problem, so it, this is the space where you have to state it. This recommendation section is the place where you need to uh, simply transform your findings or your relevant findings that you have found to make a difference and can turn out to be an alternative solution. So where have you extracted it from? From your own results, from your findings that you have worked on. So it's all coming from that and you have like turn it into the kind of recommendation which are coming from your side. So this can also have the picture of a proposal as well. So points there within your mind, you write them in the form of either recommendation or turning it into a proposal as well. So look into uh, how it can be implemented you need to state that as well what is their general applicability that point has to be made clear as well what are the suitability of all those findings if you are stating it within the recommendation section that means that it's all coming from the findings let's say insurance plan was like one of the findings which will turn out to be a key figure or key factor making a difference so Ref with reference to your key findings, you are saying it that it turns out to be quite suitable to be implemented and that's why I recommend it to be applied here within our own working organization as well. And the last point is like all about suggestion for 
further research, meaning that probably the other definition or connotation or meaning of the word stress might not have been considered while working or while studying it. So the other meanings or uh, we can say that the positive effects, there was an example in the previous slides as well that there might be some positive effects of the stress as well just to increase the speed of the other person although people may differ, even you may differ that how stress can simply uh, have the positive effects. Uh, it's not the case with you. Okay, fine, no problem, but sometimes the stress uh, compels you to calm down, get away from all that task which is giving you all the stress and, uh, and once you get aside, once you go on aside, you are able to relax. That relaxation, my dear fellows, turn out to be a key factor to refresh you, to give you uh, a new energy to focus once again on that work better than the way when you were stressful. So don't you think that's a positive effect? An opinion which is coming from my side, not saying that's the fact you have to quote it or state it, one view over it. But the point here is if you stated that other connotations might also be considered for future study, the same study can also be carried out on other campuses of concepts. The same study can be carried out uh, on a yearly basis to check the kind of variation which comes within the data of the employees collected and the same study can be carried out on part-time employees as well if the previous data was full-time working employees. So these suggestions are also part of the recommendation section and can be made part the way you want to. Now you know the basic basics. Basic basics. Now look at the way the kind of uh, vocabulary that I am coming with. So these things can happen when you know when one person is basically imagining that there are people right now here on the opposite hand side. So I'm imagining you, I'm able to see you as well. You have no idea. I can see so many of your faces. If you are moving their specs just the way as I told you, some jotting down their points, some of you lying on their bed saying the teacher can't see us. Ha ha ha. Yes, no problem. But I am able to see you. You have no idea because you're papers are going to tell you that the teacher was able to see you and was looking into it whether you are following him or not. That aside, how to write the recommendation? Well, a few good points especially for you to focus on. Well, your recommendation have to be very much brief, meaning you have to keep it concise and reason for recommendation should only be given if it's a necessity if it's really much needed for example if you have stated a totally new solution if it's uh, coming up from findings that's okay the uh, all the people who are who have read the report would know basically that why you are stating it over here so it won't require that much of explanation or why it's that mandatory but if you if it's your own opinion the kind of solution that you are recommending it then you need to of course provide a little bit of explanation. It is supposed to be clear meaning it shouldn't be ambiguous as to how the suggestion should be implemented. It should be clear. It should be practic practicable, applicable, uh, should be feasible and suitable. I can think of all the bills. <laughs> I'm coming up with all the words but the point here is that it should be workable and practicable and can be applied. That's why it's written that it shouldn't be that much of confusing, should be very much clear, should be very much brief. And of course it has to be precise, meaning not, not so many vague recommendation which are coming from insufficient research and analysis. So your research has to be authentic, meaning your overall survey, your own study which you have done should be authentic as well. It should have all the documented sources that you have studied, meaning uh, you have studied which what has been done before you. What you are doing is quite relevant to what has been done, goes in line with it, and that's why you want to apply it here, come up with some new stuff as well, and together you're going to make it a very sufficient research analysis, and that's how you'd be able to achieve some practicable solutions as well, as we have talked about all the recommendation section. Now talking about the bibliography or the works cited page. Well, not that much of confusion should be there within your mind as I explained it to you that your 
Microsoft Office has the software Microsoft Word. There are others by talking about Microsoft Word. Within that, you can easily make a citation first. And by citation, I mean uh, giving a reference of the author whose words, whose ideas, whose diagrams, whose interview data are you simply citing or quoting within your work. So for that purpose, you need to uh, give a citation of that author. Author's last name would be there, comma, year of publication would be there, then the brackets will be closed. And before that, uh, the quote would be there under quotation marks, or double commas. This is basically uh, citations. And this version of citation is basically known as where you are uh, like making this parenthesis. So this is called parenthetical citation in which the author's name and the year uh, Y basically is written together. This is parenthetical citation. There are others uh, more in which like you, uh, at the top you can give not top my apologies at the bottom you basically give a note as well. These are called footnotes and footnotes are also providing a reference as well and the detailed reference comes of course at the end of that book or that report and there is another category within which you uh, provide end notes. So you within your writing, within your work, while you, if this is a bullet and over here you have to give a reference, so you basically make a superscript number for, uh, for the footnotes as well as for the end notes, this number. And at the end of the whole book, there will be a heading of end notes and under which you will simply write one and under which there will be a complete reference of that uh, reference that you have given or of that citation that you have given on that previous page on which the superscript number one was there. But coming back to uh, these are the basic formats, the APA, the MLA will be discussed in detail as well. But the point here is these are the formats which are used. So there are many resources through which you can make citation. I've just mentioned one, Microsoft Word. There are sites such as uh, CiteFast. It's a very good site. So it will help you to make a reference automatically and quite quickly. You will not have any kind of issue to make a reference for yourself. Then I guess this bibme.org is also uh, an other very good site for like making your citation and work reference page. And uh, all you need to do is to simply sign up, register, get registered, sign up, and you would be able to just keep a repository of all the references that you have been making so far within your research work. So you'd be able to do it and that will help you a lot even whenever you have to cite things once again because your complete reference list is being maintained and uh, maintained over there within that site. And there was another one as well. The reference will be provided to you but as I have stated it, uh, those one of you who just simply jot down and write down things, you can share it with others as well just the way as I have shared it or for those who don't want to. Uh, drag back and listen to the kind of references that I've just said. So ensure that all the work you cite in the body of your report is listed in the reference list. So this is very much important. Few points and few instructions uh, with reference to the bibliography or work cited. Of course, this is with reference to the kind of page which comes at the end in which the complete reference is provided to you. But uh, this reference is for something which was there earlier and I am referring to this parenthetical citation in which you give the author name and uh, the year of publication. So my point is that you basically cite words for the people, you basically cite their ideas, by word I mean their quotes, the exact words. Then moving ahead, uh, if you are taking some figures and diagrams, from some other source of course so you have to give its reference as well. Then moving ahead if you are uh, referring to the data of some interview so you need to mention it as well and some other sources as well. So this is the kind of variety which exists that needs to be cited as well. And why do we cite basically for the credibility for the acknowledgement uh, of those authors and on the other hand for your own credibility as well. If you are citing and quoting documenting other sources or credible authors. It is basically enhancing your own work, making it more credible, making it more authentic, making it more reliable. 
This is what you get out of uh, citing other sources. So this is the importance of it. Don't just take it for granted. Don't just take it uh, as a formality. This thing is going to make an actual difference when the times comes and that's why it's very much needed and should be done especially with reference to the kind of report on which you are working. Now talking about uh, the manner in which the courts are basically cited, let's say there is according to the rule of thumb if there are like less than four lines which are being directly quoted. So for that you basically cite it within the text, you call it as in-text citation as well. That means that um, this is the text which is moving and within which this is the line which is like the exact quote of it and then afterward once again the lines are moving. So this is, uh, this is the kind of text which is like uh, coming within the text. This is called in-text citation because it was less than four lines even if you type it as well. But if there is a situation in which there are uh, more than four lines which you are going to quote, well, in that case, you use another format that is called as the block quote format in which you indent it from both sides. You keep it separate from the rest of the content. And then, for example, these, this is the length of the lines. And all of a sudden, this is the block format. And then the lines will once again continue. This is your block format. You have indented it because its length was long. So that's how this is the other mode of quoting things. I thought I should give you the difference as well. Then another point that I would like to mention here is to always go and try to go for the primary source rather than the secondary. So what do you mean by primary and secondary? Would you like to tell us? Yes, I will tell you. This is the kind of question that like I spoke from your side. So don't need to worry. The kind of question which may arise within your mind, I'll try to say it uh, from your side on your behalf within the kind of room in which I'm uh, sitting and delivering the lecture to you. Primary source is, my dear students, the one who is the actual researcher. And let's say before you and me, there is another individual, let's say, is the actual researcher who has worked on something. He or she has reported it as well. Before you and me, let's say I am Z, Mr. Z. Mr. A has worked and Mr. A's work is read by Mr. B and now Mr. B cites Mr. A within his work or her work. Not say her because it's a Mr. Okay, Mr. B cites Mr. A's work. This Mr. B becomes the second resource for me. Why? Because if I am unable to find uh, exactly or directly if I am if I'm unable to directly access the work of Mr. A and if I rely on the, the book written by Mr. B where Mr. A has been cited that means Mr. B becomes my second resource and whenever I have to actually give a reference of uh, what was done by Mr. A the primary person or the primary source I'm going to focus first on what Mr. A said according to Mr. A this, this, this is basically the findings, his lines, according to Mr. A and then within my reference, within my reference, parenthetical reference, which is written within parenthesis, I am going to write qtd.in. It's written as qtd.in. This stands for quoted in. And right after this expression, qtd.in, you basically write the secondary source. So you're going to write the name of Mr. B. So according to A, parenthesis, quoted in Mr. B's name here, parenthesis close, and then Mr. A's view. So you are acknowledging both, but first acknowledging the primary source, then acknowledging within parenthesis with the expression of qtd.in, the secondary source, and that's how you basically move and provide the citation. So this is basically the point that you need to remember, especially with uh, reference to the way you cite things, the way you provide things, and that will help you a lot when you are basically writing your discussion and introductory section as well. So these were the points. I hope I'm not missing anything. Yes, the appendices, which comes at the end, of course, the accessory information, not that accessory because 
uh, the definition will tell you contains material which is too detailed technical or complex to be included in the body of the report which is why you put it at the end and it could be specifications questionnaires and even long complex table of figures which are placed at the very end of the report so it comes at the end doesn't require that much of um, samples because it's placed at the end so we'll like to end it uh, at the conclusion section where we have talked about discussion findings conclusion recommendation and appendices and I believe you now know how to write a report because that will be your task as well just coming ahead but I enjoyed it that doesn't mean it's the end of the story there is much more to cover as well which will come ahead but for today's session this needs a break because of which uh, I'll be taking a glass of water as well I'll recommend the same for you as well so till that time take good care of yourself remember me in your prayers I'll see you in the next lecture Assalamu alaikum and Allah Hafiz